tell you good evening. I believe it's the biggest uh, group we've had on the Wednesday night in a long time, and I think that there's a reason why that you're here tonight. And I want to—I just want to share something with you. And I, I want—I want y'all to pay attention to what I'm about to tell you because while I go, I, I, I listen to everybody's prayers. But the thing that disturbs me about prayer, Jeff just got through praying, and I know that people that listen to this message—they don't get to hear all of your prayers. David, as you stood up and you said your prayer, it blessed my heart. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, what a prayer. And then Jeff come up and he said, Lord, you, you prepared the preacher to preach, but prepare me to listen. So I, I hope that you're prepared to listen tonight at what God has laid on my heart. And uh, because I, I believe with all my heart, whenever God gives me a message, it's something that the Bible says that it doesn't come up void. And I think about this a lot because I. I don't know about y'all, but I love an underdog. And if I'm watching a sporting event, most of the time I'll, I'll root for the underdog at what's going on. And I, and I always want them to, to, to come out and win because as I was growing up, you know, I would see people that was that was small in stature and, that, and people would kind of run over them and pick on them. And I was the type of person that I would want to fight for them. That's just the way I've always been. And y'all might think that's not the way to go, but that's, that's my personality. I'm, I'm still like that today. And, uh, you know, I've got some people that I want to shout out to. I want to shout out to Philip and his friends that are that watch every single one of these messages. And I know I'm not the best the best pastor. Matter of fact, they, they talk a lot about my, my southern slang that I have. But this, this is what God uh, gave me, and this is all I've got. And I, 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 I just appreciate people really listening to what God has given for, for all of us to see us grow, and I'd like to see them grow stronger in everything that they're doing. And, and I've got a friend of mine, that's my, that, that, uh, a cousin of mine, and he was on our prayer chain, and it was and his name was Shane, and there, he's an underdog right now. And the reason he is is because the doctors don't know what's going on, and they don't know what's causing this problem, the cause of the conflict, and they they just saying, hey, pray for him. He's, he's fighting for his life. And, and I realize that, you know, right now he's an underdog because they say, saying we don't know what's going on. But I, I think about this. God, I believe with all my heart, is going to bring him through this. And his mother and daddy, they're talking about, you know, y'all just pray. Y'all are getting us through this. And we don't know what, what tomorrow holds. Well, I'm going to tell you, I know what tomorrow holds. Now, I'm going to tell you, if I don't make it till tomorrow, I know what my tomorrow holds. And I want y'all to know I, I stand firm on knowing that my tomorrow holds that I'm going to be either here in this body or I'm going to be absent in presence with the Lord. That's what my, that's what my tomorrow holds. And so I just comfort this family and, and let them know that that's, that's what it's all about right now. Uh, you know, I want to share something with you because of, I see shy people. Whenever you see people that are shy, the one thing that I want to do is I want to talk to them. You may say, Brother Steve, that's not right to talk to them. They're shy. They don't want to talk to you because they're, they're reserved. No, I'm not talking about bringing them up in front of people and, and, and having them talk out loud to people. I'm talking about I like to get one-on-one -on -one with them because we know that, that they're shy and they're, they're, they're reserved in what they say. And, you know, something I think about a lot of times is that somebody that's small, I like to build them up. I like to tell them, hey, how are you doing, you know, and just build them up and, and, and just talk to them like that. And, I, you know, and the thing I think about, too, is whenever you see somebody that's weak or we may have called meek or, or somebody that's timid, I always want to try to find a, a way to be a strong person for them, a strong friend, and, and, to, and to bring out strong points in their lives. So I'm telling you all, as a body of believers, I, I think it is very important for you to find somebody who is an underdog, and you try to you try to bring them out of that, because a lot of times people feel like their life is gloom and doom, and they don't have a future for them. And let me tell you something: there's a future in Jesus Christ. Whenever you know Him as your Lord and Savior, you might be living in this world, and everything feels like that it's going down the wrong path. But I'm telling you, our Savior can get a hope of you and change anything that's going on in your life. You know, I think about an addict. And, uh, uh, somebody that's addicted to, to any type of anything, you can be addicted to a lot of different things that takes you away from, from following and walking with God. And I look at them as an underdog, and what we do is we pray for them, and we encourage them, we strengthen them. 
And the one thing that I realize about my God, let me tell you about my God, what He does for people who are underdogs. And I think about this, and, I, and, and let me tell you, let me, let me speak to you through David's voice. We know about little bitty boy David, about he was a little runt. The Bible says that he was, he was a runny person, that he was, he was pretty to look at. He was a person, whenever he came in front of Goliath, Goliath looked at him and said, you're coming to me with a, with a, a, a you know, you think about that little slingshot. And David was up there a monster of a man. And I've got a scripture that I, I'm not going to go all the way back. Y'all know all, this, all the, the, the thing about David and Goliath. Let me tell you what I'm, I'm going to read to you. The Bible says, and this is what it says in 1 Samuel 17, 46. I want y'all to listen to what David said. He'd already told him what he was going to do. But let, me, let me just give you a description of what he told this man that was standing in front of him, a mighty man, and he realized, I'm, I, you're mine now. See, let me tell y'all something about the life. Life had just got through powering down everybody that was in the army. But this one little boy said, "Ah, you're mine now, because I've got somebody fighting my battle for me. I'm going to tell you, have you got the Lord God fighting your battle for you every single day? Listen to what he said in, in 1 Samuel 17, 46. Listen to what he said. He said, this day will the Lord deliver you into my hands. We're talking about a little bitty boy that's here talking to a giant, and he's saying, Let me, I can just see him right now. Pointing up to him, he said, Today, my Lord is going to deliver you into my hands. And, I, and can you imagine? Are you paying attention to what I'm telling you? This man that was in full armor, and this boy that was out there that was a little shepherd boy, and he was saying, Today, today you're mine. And I'm going to tell you, that's his power right there. That's telling you how he felt about God. See, we realize that later on in David's life, he became a man after God's own heart, the way the Bible describes it. Let me tell you something. He was a boy that was after God's own heart also. He made sure that he let people know who he stood for. And let's, let me go on. He said, This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee. You know, we think about this. He said, I'm going to strike you. He's sitting there telling him, I, I'm just about going to slap you here in just a minute. That's what he's saying. I'm fixing to put you down to my level. Are y'all paying attention to what he's telling? And I, I want y'all to know so many times we wilt away whenever a little bit of adversity comes in our life. Whenever God's saying, listen, I want you to get strong while this adversity is coming into your life. And I want you to see my glory take over your life. Every single one of us, we've had adversity in the last month. Every one of us, you know, in some kind of way. So all we've got to do is say, God, I want you to show me how I can, through your power, beat down every one of my giants. And he said, And listen to this. He said, I will smite thee. And he said, I will take your head from thee. And I will give it to the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day and to the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts. He's not only saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you out. I'm going to leave your body sitting right there. And those buzzards and everything's going to come up there and they're going to devour you and eat on you because nobody else is going to come out to get you because they know not to come out here because if they come out here, I'm going to get them too. That's pretty good, isn't it? Whenever I read this, he said, all these things are going to come and all the wild beasts of earth and all the and all of the earth, listen to this, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. See, I'm going to tell you, whenever God fights your battle, people notice. People see what's going on. If, you, if you're having trouble in your family, you get down on your face before God and you see God start lifting up your family. If you're having a problem with your children or your grandkids or your, or your uh, husband or your wife, you get down before God and you say, God, I want to turn them over to you. And listen to this. I'm going to tell you what God will do. God will fight your battle for you with them. I tell people all the time, you need to stick the Lord on people sometimes and let God fight your battle because there's some battles that we're not able to win, but God's always able to win. So I'm going to tell you something like this. Matter of fact, Blake made a comment that about where I preached about a guy that, that his whole family would come in every week before he got to church and would pray. And they would get around and they would hold their hands over the pew and boy, they would just pray and pray. And they would saturate that place with prayer because y'all know how we are. 
we're people that's preachers of habit, aren't we? Every person, every one of y'all, you come and sit in your same old little pew every single week. I've done found myself doing it too. Sunday, I'm not going to sit right over there. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. And remind me in case I forget. But he was coming in, and in this case right here, it really worked for him because all the people was laying hands on, on that pew that he sat in, and they was praying. And listen, and those prayer warriors prayed, and he said, oh, it feels like this pew is on fire every time I get there. Listen, God, he wins his battle, but he wants his people to call up and say, Lord, help me. Whenever I read this and I think about this, and I want y'all to turn to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 7, and I want y'all to listen to this, because the children of Israel, these children of Israel, they were, they were uh, under the Egyptians in bondage and slavery. They were people that were just beat down to the point that they were like, you know, they were people that looked at as, a, as an underdog. And we know all the story about this, about the children of Israel. And I want to read you a scripture right here about them in Deuteronomy chapter 7. Listen to verse, verse 6 and see what, what was going on. And the Bible says, For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee. Listen to what he says. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all the people that are, that are uh, upon the face of the earth. And I want y'all to think about what that just got through saying. And, and as you're thinking about this, God was telling them, said, said, you are my chosen people above all the people on the face of the earth, but yet they were in slavery, but yet they were in bondage. And I want y'all to know, but after they heard this right here, could you see where they could have boasted? Where they could have said, I want you to know I am God's chosen people. And you could be you could be sitting there thinking, this person is boasting, but yet he's in slavery. This person is boasting, but yet he's in bondage. There's people, there's people that are in slavery of sin and bondage of sin, and they're not giving God His boastfulness that He needs. And you know what they do? They stay in there. They stay where they're at. They were staying in slavery. Uh, but you know something? After reading this, I'm thinking, boy, they could have boasted. But listen to what the Bible says. Listen to what God says. Verse 7. It said, The Lord did not set, did not set His love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more numbered than any other people. For you were the fewest of all people. I think about this because I think about what, what we're going through as a body of believers right now. I think about how God has truly blessed this church and blessed this congregation and blessed what we do and bless our, bless everything that goes on in our life. And let me tell you why. God is not worried about making this church a, a mighty a, a mighty congregation that is, that is hundreds and hundreds of people. What God wants is He wants us, as a body of believers, to be faithful to Him. And as we're faithful to Him, we may influence somebody in some kind of way that they would that they would say, wait a minute, I want to be a Christian just like that person. Miss Joni, I saw her today. We was both getting this uh, cheap gas that we've got now. And uh, and we were up there getting our gas, and she said, she said, Brother Steve, I heard you before I saw you. I get that a lot, as a matter of fact. She said, I heard you before I saw you, but I was talking to a guy that was there that, that cleans planes for a living. That's what he does. And, and as I was talking to him about it, I, I told him, I said, man, you must be good at this. And he said, well, I just got through going and cleaning a boat. And I just cleaned a helicopter yesterday. And, and he talked about what he did. And he talked about how he did it. He said, he said, I left this morning at 4 o'clock in the morning. He said, I'm so tired. He said, I just want to get back home. And I told him, I said, I said, you know something? I want to get home today and, and get ready for church. And he looked at me and he said, you know, I may go too. But you know something? Before I said that, it may not have ever crossed his mind. And you may say, Brother Steve, you didn't have an influence on him. I may not have. But I will tell you one thing that I did have an influence. I may had an influence that if he at least thought that day, I may go to church today too. I don't know if he did. I'll never see the man again. But the one thing I do realize is that I stood there, I made a conversation with him, I talked to him, I shared with him, said, man, I just want you to know I'll be praying for you. Thank you. And, and he went from talking about planes to here we was talking about the Lord and going to church. Listen, I'm not telling you that everybody in the world is supposed to come to this church, but God wants everybody to go to heaven. He has that on his heart that every man would go to heaven. But listen, you've got to do something. 
you've got to give your heart to Christ Jesus in order to go to heaven. It's not going to church. It's about your relationship with Him. Getting that right. And whenever I read this scripture, listen to what the Bible says, because they was humbled by what they had heard. Listen to verse 8. But because the Lord loved you, you follow me? See, He was saying, I didn't choose you because you were, you're a, a mighty army. I didn't choose you because you were in slavery and you are an underdog. I chose you because, God says, because He loved them. See, I want y'all to know about God. God chooses you because He loves I'm going to tell you, no one in this world can go to heaven without first the draw of the Lord in the heart. I'll tell you this, you can, you, can, you can pray all the prayers you want to, you can act, you can act all religious and carry your Bible up under your arm all you want to, but until God starts drawing your heart and convicting your heart that you need to be saved, you cannot be saved. The Bible tells me that. And let me even go further. After He convicts you, you better make a response to Him because what if you don't get convicted again before you see your last day? So He's sitting here saying, because the Lord... i got to stop. i got to stop. I'll go back to that in a minute. I don't know if y'all noticed, but I love to preach that people need to be saved. Deep down in my heart, deep down in my heart, God has called me to be your pastor, and I know He's called me to be your pastor. That's there is no way you'd love me like you love me if I wasn't called to be your pastor. And I'm going to tell you something. There is no way I could love y'all like I love y'all if God didn't call me to be your pastor. Does that make sense? I'm not saying that to make you mad, but y'all know me well enough to know there's no way y'all could love me like you love me if I wasn't called to be your pastor. But I'm going to tell you what God has called me to do. God has called me to every time, every single time, I open up His Word to evangelize. Every single time, it doesn't matter if I'm talking about a plane, I want to get you to cross. It doesn't matter if I'm talking about a ball game, I want to get you to cross. I don't care what in the world that I'm preaching on. If I go through a message and I don't get you to cross the Calvary, I am a failure as your pastor. That's whenever you say, all right, Brother Steve, see you later. Time for you to go. You know what? Because I'm not doing my calling. My calling is to preach the Word of God to see people saved. Right? All right, that's your calling too. See, if it's my calling as being, as being your pastor, uh, then what is your calling? The same thing mine is. Because we're all one. We're a family of God. Amen? Whenever I read this scripture, I want y'all to see what the Bible says. But because the Lord loved you, and it says, And because he would keep the oath which he swore unto your fathers, which the Lord had brought you out of a, a mighty hand, and redeemed, and redeemed out of the house of bondage uh, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Israel. Whenever I read all this scripture, y'all know we've got to realize that we must know where our strength comes from. Every day of our life, where our strength comes from. Listen to verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, is, uh, he is God. And he's faithful God, which keepeth the covenant. He's saying, I'm going to take you to the land of milk and honey. I want you to know there's something waiting on you. When you're going through your trial and your bondage right now, I've got something waiting on you. So you better just keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping your faith. Keep on being strong. Whatever you're going through, keep your faith. Stay strong. People say, you know something? I don't want to go up there to all them hypocrites up there at church. Well, then let me tell you what you are if you say that. You are a hypocrite. Because you say you're one thing, but you're living a different kind of life. I'm going to tell you something. I'm looking out here, and I'm seeing some messed up people. Every single one of us. And if I had a mirror in front of me, I would see the teeth of messed up people. But I'm going to tell you what I'd see. I'd see, and I'm looking at people who are redeemed by the blood of Christ. And now they know that there's a promise for them. That whenever Jesus Christ comes back, He's going to take you home with Him. That's your promise. That's what God's all about. He makes a promise to you just like He did the children of Israel. It says this right here. The Lord keeps His covenant and mercy with them that loveth Him and keeps His commandments to a thousand generations. Man, that's good stuff. And we know who passes judgment. Every one of us knows who passes judgment. Listen to verse 10. And it says, And repay them that hate Him to their faith. 
to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his faith. If you read this scripture and you think about what's going on all in our world right now, let me tell you something. People who are mean and evil people, they will stand before God one of these days and He will judge them. And he will. And all these people who are saying, I'll pray for you, but they're not knowing who they're praying to. I'm going to tell you, whenever you pray, you better put the name of Jesus in your prayer. You better let God know, I'm praying to you, God. You are the only God. You sent the only Savior to the world. And all these people who are bringing up some kind of God in their mind, they'll stand before God and He'll say, Depart from me. I never knew you. I'm going to tell you, you better make sure who you're praying to. You better make sure that your faith is strong. Amen? about first. We've got to keep ourselves clean. And this is something we've got to do always. Always. Listen. Please, y'all. Don't just be clean at church. Don't just be the person that comes in here and you've got your collars buttoned up and you've got your good clothes on. And you walk out of there and you in your mouth, if you if your mama heard you talking, she'd say, I need to wash your mouth out with soap. And listen, I'm even going to go further, y'all. You've got to watch what you say because people are watching you as Christian people. And you can't let all these little four-letter words slip out and you go, Ooh, I'm sorry. No, it come out of your mouth and people knows what you're saying. And I'm going to tell you something. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. It's important that we know what we're saying and we know what's coming out. I'm going to tell you something. I have people all the time, let me share this with you. I am nobody. I've never been nobody. I'm never going to be nobody. But I'm going to tell you what upsets me is whenever people say something and they say a cuss word and they say, oh, I'm sorry, preacher. Don't you be apologizing to me. I am nobody. But I'm going to tell you, I stand for somebody. So what they do is they're think, they're feeling like that they're representing my position, which is a mighty position. I'll tell you, I stand before God about this position, but I'm going to tell you, me as Steve McKee, don't you apologize to me because I'm telling you something. You're standing before God now and later on, too. You better get that right. So, Brother Steve, how did you quit your old bad mouth? I, I'm going to tell you, I prayed every day, God, take my mouth from me. God, take this tongue and you make it where it burns whenever I say something that I'm not supposed to do. Every single one of y'all have been mad in the past week. Somebody's rubbed you wrong. You've had a situation where you wanted to do something and, and, and retaliate to people. I know you are. Y'all ain't the little saint. You know, all y'all are is, is redeemed sinners. That's what you are. And you know what? Redeemed sinners, what they do is whenever the whenever the old devil attacks them, you say, mm-mm, mm-mm, no, 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 devil, you ain't no part of There's no place for you right here in my heart, devil. And you tell him to get out of your life and get out of your home and get out of everything that's going on. And then you watch what you say. You watch how you act. You tre- Are y'all with me? Thank y'all. Glad you're with me tonight. Let me, let me tell you something. We've got to always stay clean. Listen to what verse 11 says. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and all the statutes and all the judgments which I command you this day to do them. See, God tells us every day, listen, all you got to do is get up every day. Love the Lord your God. With all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. He covers all the sin in two. Love God, love your neighbor. You know what's going to happen? You're going to go to heaven, and you're not going to treat nobody any way other than the way you'd want to be treated. I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to treat you any other way than I want to be treated. If I go home and I hug my wife, you know something? I, I know I want her to hug me back. If I go home and I smack her upside the head, you know what? After she kills me, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, honey, I'm sorry. Listen, we need, it's, it's simple. Let me tell you how easy this life is. It is this simple. You love God and you put Him first, and everybody you see, you treat them with the respect that they deserve. Just like you'd want to be treated. I never wanted a boss to talk to me like I was a dog, so I never talked to my boss bad. Amen? So listen to this. Wherefore it shall come to pass. 
if you hearken or listen to them by judgments and keep them and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercies which I swear unto your father. He's saying, listen, I, I promised them, but you can receive the blessing. And he goes on to say this, and he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. And, and it says, He will also bless the fruits of thy womb. He's saying, listen, if you stay true to me, not only am I going to bless you, but I'm going to bless your children, and I'm going to bless your grandchildren. I'm going to bless everybody in your generation from here on by your being faithful, because what happens when you're faithful? People follow you. People are going to follow a faithful person. But I'm going to tell you something. Somebody that says to me to follow the time, everybody, everybody turns their back on you. You know why? Because they're not trustworthy. And the Bible goes on to say, And he will bless the fruits of thy, thy womb, and the fruits of thy land, and thy corn, and thy wine, and their oil, and increase, and thy cattle, and thy flocks, and thy sheep. Listen to this. God sitting there saying, Listen, all you've got to do is be faithful. I'm fixing to bless you all the way around. He's not sitting here saying, I want to give you everything you want. He's saying, I want to provide all of your needs. Not only is he going to provide your needs, as God provides your needs, Listen to this. He goes on this. He said, I'm going I'm to take care of your land, which I swear unto thy fathers, and I'll give you. And he said, verse 14 says, And thou shalt be blessed above all people. This is what our God says. Our God blesses us above all people. While you're looking and you're seeing turmoil all over the world right now, I'm not in turmoil. You know why? I know who I'm walking with. I know who I'm serving. I know that my Lord has it under control. I'll tell you all this. I pray for people. I pray for people that the nation that's been, that's, that's having trouble that there's war going on. I pray for people whenever there's sickness in their family. I pray for them. I let them know I'm praying for them. But I'm going to tell you, whenever the sickness comes into my family, as it has mine and all of yours, as death is knocking at our door, as it has mine and all of yours, I'll tell you what I do. I have comfort in knowing that I know the end. I know what's coming at the end. So I'm going to tell you, you either, you either are here in total turmoil because you don't know the end of this book right here, or you've already put your faith in God. What have you done? That's my prayer for you. What have you done to make sure that you're about with you? So you can pray. Let's pray. Lord, God, thank you for your word. Thank you, God, that every day of our life, Lord, that we can be strengthened by you. God, I lift up these men that are, that are watching and trying to get closer to you by, by listening to the Word of God, by opening up their Word, by having fellowship one with another. God, I lift them up in prayer to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I lift up Shane and Kathy and Kenny, and I lift up their family. God, I lift up I lift their, I, all my prayer for all the people, Michelle and all of her family. There's so many people who need you, Lord, not just for salvation, but they need you for comfort, for comfort through what they're going through. God, my prayer is that you touch their life. Lord, change them and help them to be close to you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I love y'all.